Good afternoon. Hi, everybody. Spring is coming. Look at those buds. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Did you see the pink? Isn't that awesome? The honey, what? Well, the blue. The pink trees are out. And what's that big, long weeping willow is out? Weeping willow, the brown those, hairs. What does one flower say to the other flower, honey? What? Is that you, bud? <laughs> and it's coming. Spring is coming, guys. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Welcome. Hey, something unbelievable happened this week. An icon. Kind of like the Christian Pope to the Christian circles. That's Billy Graham went to be with Jesus. I posted forty of his greatest sayings, and boy, what a man of God he is. As a you know, being brought up in a Christian home, I I knew Billy Graham more than probably as good as anybody. But how he came on TV and and we watch as a family. And I remember when he came on TV, my dad calling people who aren't lo who are lost and tell them and encourage them to watch Billy Graham. I posted about my dad in Cleveland would get a bus full of people and go see Billy and uh, members of our church who I thought were Christians, but they gave their life to Jesus that day and how awesome that was and what a testimony they had and others and how much, how much fun that was. My mom sang in the choir and my dad was one of the counselors, but that was awesome. But something really awesome happened uh, because my wife, was led to Jesus by Billy Graham. How old, honey bunch? I was eight years old. Eight years old. Every time Billy Graham was on television, my mom would watch that every night of the Billy Graham Crusades. And I remember being eight years old in our little tiny apartment and the little black and white TV. And um, I heard right. Billy night after night multiple times throughout my life. Amen. And when I prayed the prayer and gave my life to Jesus, Amen. when he did the call. I want to talk about something here. I've been putting some stuff on Facebook about what is the cost? What is the cost of temptation? What is the cost of giving in to temptation? And what is the benefit of resisting temptation? Let's talk about that today. You know, when I was lost, I, I when I saw people like Jimmy Swagger and you know everybody made fun of them and, and Baker and you know I was one of them too. I was lost. You know, how could someone? get up there on Sundays and preach the word and then fall into temp temp the temptation like that. But you know what? When we went to church this morning, the song they were singing was something about it has to be our brokenness for us to be in his holiness because there's no one righteous. But I just want you to know that I'm a sinner saved by grace. But to experience the draw, to, to experience the pain of uh, going through temptation, you're either going to experience two kinds of pain: either the pain of, either the pain of regret, or the pain of discipline. Which one are you going to do? Our culture, you know, our culture, honey, doesn't tell us. Our culture doesn't tell us, and definitely, our flesh don't tell us, and definitely, the devil don't tell us. When will tell us the consequences to our temptation? Well, if we fall to temptation. They're, those three are definitely not going to tell us the consequences of it, are they, sweetie? No, and you know what? Yeah, yeah, There's maybe. always going to be consequences for the, right. to all of your choices. That's something as a parent. I've always tried to teach my children. There's every decision you make has a consequence, whether it's a positive right. decision and therefore a positive mm -hmm. consequence, mm -hmm. or a negative decision and a negative consequence. Right. And the saying you said about the pain of, say that again, the pain of... The pain, either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And that pain that points. is applicable in either or. every area of your life. Either or, right. You know, I listen to personal right. development stuff all the time. Um, and, and you know that I'm a fitness coach, too. Right. And that is, I've heard that applied in both health and nutrition. I've heard it uh, applied in the business realm. Right. And in that... When you think about um, that you always have a choice to make, there's always going to be a pain. There's either the pain of um, staying in the course and, and persevering and having the self-discipline to get to where you need to go, right. or is it the pain of staying the same? Right. So in fitness, it's the pain of resisting the chocolate cake and getting up every day and um, doing your workout. Right. Or the pain of staying the same and having regret. Right. In business, it's the same thing. It's the making the sacrifice with your time instead of watching TV at night with yeah. you, and to being a couch potato. And today we're kind of talking about work. right sexual temptation because in the mm -hmm. culture, the flesh, and, and Satan, they'll never tell you the facts. 
I can tell you the facts. Mm-hmm. I can tell you the facts. The facts that consequences. The facts. The facts of consequences. Are the negative about, consequences about, about of my negative, kids. About my the kids. The decisions we've made. Right. I don't have a relationship with my kids. I got wonderful kids, and a lot of that, a lot of relationships severed for what I did, and that's hard for me. I don't have a relationship for my kids, and yesterday I was playing ball with one of them, and you know I like my dad played ball with me all the way up to he was eighty five seems like, and I want to be there playing ball for my with my kids, and I I'm almost blind in this eye. I'm starting to go maybe almost blind in that eye, just starting to. Lord willing, I hope I don't, dear Jesus, but. That's the consequences. That's consequences. You know, Jesus, you know, we're saved by grace and our sin is covered under the grace. But the Bible also says, you know, the Bible says, you know, where grace abounds, sin, where sin abound, grace did more abound. But there's consequences. And I'm going to tell you the facts about the consequences. So, um, understand the consequences. We should be fully aware of the consequences and give it in the temptation. We should be fully aware. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, listen to this. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, good stuff. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But without the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear. But what's the key to that? Well, Irresistible temptation must have personal boundaries when it comes to eyes, when it comes to the brain. Because first we see it, and I'm thinking maybe God did it because of my eyes. I mean, he had a reason for that. But when it hits the eyes and we feast on it and we keep dwelling on it, well, then it goes to our brain. Yes, then it starts the mind. It, it, start, it starts right there. It starts right there. Through the vision. Hi, Rod. Thank you. So boundaries... What are boundaries? Boundaries is predetermined rules we submit to ourselves that keeps us from the edge of the cliff. The other day, a year or so, I was watching football with my son or basketball, we were sports nuts, and a beer commercial came on, and there was these naked, I mean, bikini, bikini, bikini woman and stuff, and I'm like, man, I don't want him to look at it. I don't want to look at that. And I go, hey, buddy, how you doing? How's your day going? He looks, he's looking at me weird and stuff and all that and all that. But, you know, that, that's good, though. I mean, we, 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 there's, there's just boundaries that we shouldn't go to because, you know, temptation comes in the door where we unintentionally left unlocked. Let me read that again. Temptation comes in the back door we unintentionally leave unlocked. It all comes down to this in James 1.15. Here's the key verse right here, guys, ladies. I'm talking kind of men today, but everybody listen. Then you, when you desire, when desire has conceived, hang on, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. So we can stop it in its tracks. How do we stop it in its tracks? By our boundaries, guardrails. right? Guardrails. By well, boundaries, which is guardrails. Right. Yeah, that our convictions. Okay. Um, yeah, one more verse I want to tell you here. This is really good. So good boundaries, not left to, not left to gather steam or, or um, you know, the stop it before it goes. Because once it starts, once that. Once that seed is grown, like I said there in James, like I said there in James, um, you know, um, temptation beyond the will of God, faithful, escape. But once that temptation starts, once, once that seed is sown, it grows, and we have to be disciplined. We need discipline, our rules that we live by. Who are you? What are you going, who are you going to be? God, God's man is not a slave to our appetite, is he? You know, I think of lines, not crossing that line. To me, that line is like a fluorescent, you know, those little fluorescent lights you put upstairs. The fluorescent uh, light bulbs. In a room. That's, that's, light, that's fluorescent light. That's the line. I can't cross that line. We can't cross that line, can we? And a fluorescent light, what shines in the, in the darkness? It shines in the darkness. So and that everything. line is so, and we should can, be so clear. That everybody can see that. That everybody can see it so that your friends and your acquaintances don't try to 
Everybody knows. Um, they know where your line is, so they're not um, trying to influence you. If your line is so clear, they're not going to try to influence you. Amen. In the so, wrong direction. Yeah, because of Proverbs 19.16, open that sweetheart, Proverbs 19.16. So the Bible says we need rules to protect, you, our, to protect us from ourselves. We need our own set of rules to protect us from ourselves. Because uh, Proverbs 19, 16, He who keeps the commandments, of, commandments keeps his soul, but he who is careless of his ways will die. There you go, right there. That's it. That's like stopping in his tracks. Run from it. Flee from it like Joseph did. Remember Joseph? He ran, didn't he? You ran. I just thank my thank the Lord for for my for my lovely wife, and uh, we want His mess to be His message. Our mess to be His our mess. message. Amen. Mess. Yeah. Our mess. I hit and, our mess right there. And I, you know, and so those are the ways. Those are we have to use discernment to know what your temptations Amen. are and self evaluation, and then put those boundaries in place. Correct? Right. Right. Put those boundaries in place and protect your eyes. Yeah. I, you know, I was listening to Focus on the Family Friday. And there was a really good message, and she was talking to youth groups about right. the same thing. And right, absolutely. Protecting your eyes, protecting your ears. Because sometimes we ask them, people, what, well, you know, I know my dad would talk to people, and he said, well, how, how did this affair happen? Oh, she, he or she was irresistible. Well, it, after dad asked him a bunch of questions, it was certain things that led up to that, you know, um, uh, that made that irresistible, where he went past the line. Mm-hmm. Would you walk past that line, amen, honey? Right, but well, it's hard to get back. But just back. like um, Pastor yeah. Becton said today, right. I drove it, that if you, Amen. like us, have done something, mm-hmm. crossed a boundary, and when there are consequences to those boundary, to those, to that sin, mm-hmm. but God can still use you. Amen. My, because, my, because why? Right. Because it was never dependent on us. It's all about Jesus. It's always dependent on Him. We're washed clean by the blood, mm-hmm. the redness of His blood. Right. So, we give everybody a flashlight and a pin. Everybody I see. We have a flashlight and a pin, and it says Crack Clay Ministries, Tim and Veronica Bratton, Crack Clay. Um, and if you don't live in Richmond, maybe Cleveland, all my friends all over. Our address is. Well, no, it just email, message us. Yeah, message us. We'll send you one. And we'll send you one. A crack Clay. Like. Absolutely. Okay. Love to send it to you. And any prayer requests, let us know. Prayer requests. Okay. Amen. Let's pray. Can I pray, sweetheart? Mm-hmm. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for forgiveness of sins, Jesus. Thank you for. We sin all the time, but it's covered under your blood. But you also say that sin has consequences, Jesus. Help us to understand what the consequences are and read the Bible. Pray. Talk to people in church or godly people and to confide in them. And and he with me, Jesus, I pray. Help us to stand for what's right, to live for you. Use, Use our story for your glory, dear Jesus, I pray. Your name be glorified. We lift up the people who, uh, we pray every morning for certain people that watch and, and for the ailments and what's going on in their life, Jesus. We pray the good physician, dear Jesus, that you will heal them. And more importantly, you'll save them if they're not saved. But we pray that you will heal them, Jesus. And that they'll give you all the glory. And you will use their story for you, I pray. Amen. We love you guys. Have a great Sunday. Don't forget to watch the cast. Cutie, you're catching on. Love you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.